joined by the lovely Lauren Reeves. Thank you so much for coming to speak about your chosen subject today. Thank you for having me. Before we get into your topic though, I would love to start with a quick introduction. So let the viewers know who you are, where you work and a bit about um, your career in tech sales. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Lauren Reeves. Um, I've been in tech sales now for three years, almost in summer, be three years. Um, and I've been in SDR for the whole time. Um, and the company I currently work for is a company called R Tandem. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's continuous performance management SaaS solution. Uh, I've been there for almost a year now, uh, which is really Coming exciting. I can't believe it's. I know. I, I can't believe it's been almost a year. It's gone so quick. I remember so when you joined, quick. and now all of a sudden you've been there for a year. I know. It's flown by. I know. But Lauren, you're too. here today to speak around why quitting isn't failure. It's a topic that I know you're super passionate about, yeah. and there's a story behind it which I'd love to delve into. But yeah. before we get started, I'd love to know what does failure mean to you? It's a big question. It is. I think. To me, I've always thought of failure as such a cliche. Mm -hmm. It's like the cliche of like, rejection is redirection. Yes. And I always think about that with failure. Like I don't think failure is a bad thing because when you fail at something, the chances are that you'll either redo it mm -hmm. and keep going or you'll try something new. And then that will end up being the next best thing for yeah, you. Yeah, like yeah. You, never, you never know at the end of the day. And I think when you fail at something, it's so easy to be like, oh, I'm so rubbish at that, like I'm no good. But actually, for every time you fail, you get closer to the next best thing for you. And it is such cliches, isn't it? But no, but to me, like, I don't think failure is a bad thing. And yeah. I never have thought failure is a bad thing. The same as, you know, the quitting. Mm -hmm. I don't think quitting things is also a bad thing. Like, you've got one life. If you're not enjoying something, if it's not for you, don't do it anymore. It's okay. Yeah. Like, move on to the next thing. Like, try something new. So to me, like, I love failure. I fail all the time. I'm always making mistakes. I made a mistake literally yesterday. Uh, like you do it all, all the time. Exactly. I mean, we're human. Everyone yeah. makes mistakes. One of my favorite podcasts ever is Elizabeth Day's How to Fail. Yes. And she says learning how to fail means learning how to succeed better. And it's all about the lessons that it teaches you in life and that redirection. That doesn't mean that that's failure. That just means you're going down a different mm. path. Absolutely. And throughout your career, as you said, you've been in tech sales for three years. Yeah. You are still an SDR. And I say still in a really positive aspect. Yes. It's not a thing that should be like, oh, you're still an SDR. Yeah. But there is a real story behind why you are in that role and yeah i'd love to to talk briefly about your your timeline yeah. and your journey and your career so far. yeah of course so i went to university i did journalism mm -hmm. and prior to that um i used to dance as well um and when it came to to leaving uni i was like do i want to be a journalist mm -hmm. like i enjoy writing i enjoy that sort of side of it but to me i really wanted to sort of make money and do things and yeah. be able to live a life that I haven't been able to live before. You know, at uni, I had to work 40 hours a week to even be at uni. I wanted to have a good, well-paid job. Mm -hmm. And journalism is notorious for one of the careers that it takes years. Yeah. Or you get lucky and then, but you, you can't go on being lucky. Mm. So I fell into tech sales. I think if you ask anyone, they all say the Everyone same thing. Does, yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't plan to be in tech sales, <laughs> so here I am. And it's exactly the same for me. It was like March, April, looking for a job and fell into my first company. Mm -hmm. Didn't really have any idea what I was doing, if I'm completely honest. I didn't really understand what an SDR was. I just knew that it was good money. And I thought, yeah, go on then. Let's give it a go. <laughs> Why not? So I'd been there in total for about um, a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And about a year in, I, I wanted to leave. I, th I thought, okay, this, I don't think I want to be here anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not even sure I want to be an SDR. Like, I actually hated being an SDR really? the first year. I hated it. If, you are, if anyone asked me, what do you think of a job? I'd be like, love my team, mm. love who I work for, but I would never actually say, say anything positive about what I did because I didn't actually like it. Yeah. Um, and then COVID happened, so I stayed for a bit longer because mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I can't leave a company where I've got no idea what's going on in the world. Yeah. Eventually left and joined my second company. Mm -hmm. Completely different industry, same role. So I'd gone from being an SDR to an SDR again. And I didn't get any financial gain. The pay was the same as well. So it wasn't like I was going up in that sense. And I think it's, it's so, it's, people are known as SDRs to be promoted within like a year. Mm -hmm. Most SDRs I know are AEs yeah. within six months to 12 months. That's normally actually what people promote about the company they want to go it's to. It's always the progression. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. So the fact that I'd left 
my role as an SDR to then become an SDR again. Already, I think people are a bit like, oh, okay, fair enough. Like, it's just, you just change your company. Mm -hmm. Second company, I fell in love with sales. Amazing. I think it really helped getting, I was, I was always involved with the SDRs of London, but um, become a community host. Mm -hmm. I started talking to far more salespeople and I think their love for it really made me realize how much I actually loved it as well. Yeah. But didn't like where I was working. Mm -hmm. So I did a switch. So I loved the job, but now wasn't keen didn't on what like I was selling. Yeah. Mm. So then I was like in, in another pickle and I think I'd been at that company for about seven months when I found our tandem. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't leave. I can't, it looks so bad on me. I've been at this company for seven months. Like it looks like I, it looks like I failed. Mm. Basically, I was like, it looks like I can't do my job. It looks like I'm rubbish and they're getting rid of me. Like it, it, I just was so concerned with how other people were would going to really look it. at it exactly yeah. that I almost didn't do it. I, I think it took me about five days to actually make the decision. Wow. And it was over, I remember it was over the Maybank holiday because I managed to get the extra few days because of the Maybank holiday. Because yeah. <laughs> Ashley, who's my CEO, she's like, I need to know by Tuesday. And right. I was like, oh no. <laughs> like, I was like, I've got to make my mind up on this bank holiday weekend. I was out all weekend as well. I was like, yeah. it's such an important decision. So glad I did it. Amazing. Best decision I ever made. And moved SDR again. So I've now been an SDR mm. at three companies. Which, if you look at that, a lot of people will be like, it's bit, hold up, yeah, it's a bit concerning. Like, why has she not got promoted? And it, it was because I didn't fit in in either of those companies. Whereas at a company I'm at now, like I was saying, like it's been almost a year, and I cannot believe it's been almost a year. Mm. It doesn't feel like it because it's gone so quick. Because I love it so much, and I think now that I'm selling something that I believe in, and I love, and I love the team, and I just, it, it, it's. It, Quitting my last job was the best thing I ever did. Oh. But there's so many people were like, you know, I speak to peers and like, mm. oh, well, I don't know if I should go. And they'd be like, you haven't been there long, Lauren. Like, are you sure? And I was like, mm, I don't know, like something's telling me to do it. Like, I know it reflects badly, but something's telling me that this is the right move to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm so glad I listened to myself and that feeling in me and did it. Well, you seem so passionate and like just yeah. hearing you talking about it. And I think it's incredible that you had that love for your team and now you have the love of sales. So you've got everything. And yeah. yes, it took you three companies to find that. But had you have not moved, you might not be here today in tech sales. You might have left like you never yeah. know. Um, and mentioning their comparison, I think that that's such a dangerous thing that people do, especially in today's age yeah. and, and social media and always comparing yourself to other people. What would you say, I guess, what advice would you give to others that are maybe in a job and they're, they're looking at their progression and their career, but then comparing themselves to where their friends are or their yeah. peers are and thinking, like kind of what you felt that I can't do this because that will mean this will hold me back. Mm. And then what will people think of me? And then, yeah, like what I would think, you say? I think, again, a bit of a cliche, like comparison is a thief of joy, mm. always. Like when you start comparing yourself to your friends, to people that are mentors or colleagues in other in the same industry as you, yeah. like, you, you're gonna end up feeling like you're behind or you're different or you're failing, but you're not. You're on your journey, and that's how I think about it for myself. So, uh, there's one person I know. He, um, he started at his company the exact same time I started at my first company. Right. And um, he stayed at that same company for the last two and a half years. Promoted several times, moved up really quickly, mm. got into closing role, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And obviously. I've done the complete opposite. I've moved companies, yeah. stayed as an SDR, but I look at us and, I'm, and I think, well, okay, I'm still an SDR, but I've found a love for video and LinkedIn. Mm. So I, I share so much on LinkedIn now, and I've got Which a big- she's incredible at. <laughs> I love now. TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> the addiction's a problem. Um, so I've got that passion. That's a big passion of mine, which if I wasn't an SDR, you I, I found, don't yeah. know if I'd have found that because I found that in my second role as an SDR, which mm. grew even more at my, at my current role. Would that be the case? Maybe not. I started SDRs of London as a community host, mm. as an SDR. And I like, I, actually I love the fact that I'm a community host and I'm an SDR, because mm. I relate to what the other SDRs in the community are, are talking about. Yeah. And I think if I'd moved so quickly, 
I wouldn't be an SDR right now. I'd be a community host for a year and I'd probably be an AE. Mm. I'd be doing something completely different. Doing We'd never SDR. kick you out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Try and make me leave, honestly. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> yeah, um, but I think that, that helps as well. Yeah. That like, I'm, I, I know that. And I think it's so easy to think about other success, but it's so hard to always look at yourself. And what I, I say all the time, and I was literally about this morning as well, is life is obviously up and down mm -hmm. but I always say when you actually look at your up and down what you tend to find is that like it's actually gone like this mm. it just happens to be that it's done this whilst it's going up and like that that's how I always think like even when I'm like down I look back like career-wise and I think well when I was a, another down I was a lot more I was lower down on my yeah, down this feels really up. down to me right now but actually I'm way more up than mm. I realized and it is like, it is, I just keep saying cliches because it is, but all the cliches do ring true. Mm. That's the thing. Like, especially for me anyway, I just keep reminding myself, like, I'm, I'm going to do this, but I will keep going up. Exactly. Because I also believe in myself and I believe that, like, I will make mistakes and yeah. I will do bad decisions. But when I've done that in the past, it's always led me to somewhere. It's always led me to now. At the end of each episode, I ask each guest to come with a failure or a challenge that they've faced in their career and what they've learned from it and how it's helped them drive forward in their career. I think it's such an important thing for us to talk about the truth behind sales and the fact that it doesn't always go right. That's mm. why we've called it Sales Unfiltered, to be the unfiltered side. Yeah. So I know it's something that you're passionate about. I know we've touched a lot on failure today in this episode, but what is one example that you can share with us today? So actually, it took me a while because I thought I've got so many failures, which is not a bad thing. Yeah. Like I was saying, like I, yesterday I accidentally enrolled the wrong people into the wrong sequence. Like it's so, it's so easy to do silly things yeah. like that. But I think, and I wouldn't actually call it a failure. I suppose it was more, it's more of like um, a challenge that I faced mm -hmm. was in one of my previous companies. I went almost four months without booking a single meeting. Really? And I was like, am I the problem? Is mm. it me? Um, what am I doing wrong? I was constantly trying to reshuffle every month and do new things. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this this month instead. Um, was constantly having one-to-ones with my manager and like my other team members. Like, and it wasn't, and I think it wasn't just me, which I think made me feel better because mm. I would talk to my other team members and they were the, the same position as me, which was when, then I, when I was then like, okay, maybe it isn't me mm. that's the problem here because I'm not the only one that's suffering with this challenge. And I don't think you'll get many people to admit to not booking meetings. Yeah, you never see that. And I'm, I've always been yeah. so open about it, so open. I remember um, at my last company, like talking to some other SDRs and saying like, oh yeah, I've not, I've not had any commission in about two months. Really? And they were like, what? And I was like, yeah, I've not had anything. And they're like, what? Uh, they just couldn't understand yeah. it. They just were like, what do you mean? And yeah. it's like, well, things aren't going right, but we're trying to fix it. So mm. I've just got to keep going until, until it gets fixed. Exactly. And then, whereas now at my current company, I'm, I'm hitting target every month and it's great. And I think it, you panic that like, you're the reason something's mm. going wrong. It's not always, obviously it can be you as well. I've done many things wrong, e.g. the like the sequence thing. But I think, it's okay to hold your hands up and go, I'm not the best salesperson. Mm. I've done some really silly things and I've made mistakes. And e.g., I didn't book meetings for four months. Mm. As a salesperson, that's like outrageous. That's blasphemy. But also it's so important that you're honest because yeah. there are, as you said, so many other people that probably have been through that but would never yeah. admit it. Anyway, well, you're going to smash it. You're going to keep booking meetings yeah. and it's never going to happen again. So no, it's not. <laughs> you won't have to say that's another challenge. But thank you so much for coming on the channel today. I've really, really enjoyed speaking to you thank and you I've having me. so much.